Hi, welcome to week 42 of Foundation 52. This week, we are continuing our conversation around human resources. And the three videos that we have will cover three different topics. The first one, hiring. The second one, team building. And the third video is on employee feedback. Now, some of this we've covered before uh, to some degree in some prior sessions, um, but there will be some new information in, in each of these videos. So let's dive right in with the hiring process and talk about that as it relates to your small business and human resources. Okay. First, what should your hiring process look like? Um, well, big thing that we want to talk about with this area is your leadership skills and what you bring to the table during the hiring process, right? So you want to think about the roles that you have available inside of your organization, the job descriptions that you're writing. You want to make sure the job descriptions reflect your core values. You want to make sure that the job descriptions reflect some personality from your company. <clears throat> and remember that your job descriptions are, they're a, they're a marketing asset, right? They tell people about your company. They're selling your company to potential employees. And so what you want to do is you want to be really reflective of the, um, of the information that's, that's in your job descriptions. And, and so you want to, you want to make sure that it gives people a really good flavor of what it's like to work for the company. That's why we always suggest that your job description includes what we like to call a day in the life, which walks people through kind of what they can expect day in and day out when it comes to working for your company. And you as a leader, you want to make sure that people understand what it's like to work for you, that you are a person who hires based on character. You hire for character over skill. You're more in, interested in if somebody can be a good team member. You want to know that people are interested in a career path, that they're looking for more than just a paycheck and a job, that you are you want to build leaders. You want to build tomorrow's leaders for your company and that you are invested in your employees. And all of that should come through in your job description. And when you think about crafting the job descriptions after you write the job description, knowing where to post the job description is also really essential, right? So there's a lot of different job boards out there and it really depends on like what you're looking for in terms of candidates, right? So if you, I mean, you can use Craigslist if you are, you know, a company that, you know, is a more of a blue, blue collar manual labor type of a company. There's a lot of good candidates that will look for jobs on Craigslist. You can use LinkedIn, Google jobs, indeed, um, glass door there's, um, Facebook, just different, different places, <coughs> excuse me, you know, get creative and, and leverage as many different sites as you possibly can. You also want to look at, you know, referrals and um, from from existing employees, and then posting in places where, um, you know, they're not necessarily job boards, like at like your church, your local church, or your local YMCA, or things like that, right? So there's there's get creative when you're thinking about where you can post for jobs um, because you may find attract somebody who doesn't even know that they're looking for a job or who doesn't have um, the, they're not so tech savvy that they would even know to look at like a, a Craigslist or a Google jobs or whatever for a job. So you want to really be thinking about, you know, where might my potential, like my ideal customer or my ideal employee, I'm sorry. So if you remember, we talked about ideal employee avatar, where would my ideal employee out uh, my ideal employee most likely be looking for a job, right? Are they going to look on the, you know, the, the bulletin board at the local grocery store, at the local church, at the local YMCA, are they going to pull a thing from a, you know, pull a ticket from a job description at the local gas station? There's a lot of places. And I think, you know, we kind of tend to get in our own heads and think, well, if, this person, you know, isn't looking on indeed.com or Glassdoor or, you know, Google job, Google jobs or something, then they're not qualified. And that's not true. You're dismissing really qualified candidates. If you're thinking that you can only find them in certain places, people have different habits and people just, you know, don't, they, they go with what they know 
and they go with what works, right? So if they've had great luck in the past finding a job by pulling, by seeing a, an advertisement at their local church, then that's probably where they're going to look again. So take a chance on people and get really creative with where you're posting for your job. And then when you think about the interview, you really want to have a clear process in place, ask questions that go beyond skill, understand like, is this person a good fit for the team? Is this person, can they think on their feet? Are they a good decision maker? How do they decide, um, how do they handle rough situations or how do they handle just situations that show, demonstrate integrity? Like, you know, if they're in a parking lot and they see a cart just lingering in a parking space and there's a cart corral that's close by, do they put the cart in the cart corral or do they just leave it in the parking lot? Um, if they're running late and they're not parked anywhere near a cart corral and they are shopping and they've, they've got to get someplace, do they take the time to put the cart away or do they leave it for someone else to do? Like there's two kinds of people in this world, the people that put their shopping carts away and the people that don't. And I don't want anyone working for me who doesn't put their shopping cart away. It's lazy. So think about those kinds of things. And there's ways to ask those questions that aren't leading and that will get you the information that you're looking for. And that's what you want. You want to hire character. You want to hire quality people who have high character. You can teach skill. You can teach anybody skill, but you can't teach people character. So that's ask questions that are around character that are around behavior that really give an indication of where this person's strengths are and and how they would handle certain situations because those are the kind of people you want to build your team around <clears throat> and then finally using your core values as the basis for the interview process so if you've got a core value where it's important to you that you know the customers always come first then ask behavioral type questions that lead to how customers are treated by this potent, by this prospect. You want to, you want to understand that you got to take your core values and decompose them into interview questions that are going to help you understand if this candidate is somebody who's going to act on your core values. Cause that's what you really, really want. You want to hit on the core values, right? You want high character people. Okay. Onboarding new hires. I love onboarding. I love a solid onboarding process. Nothing translates to a better employee experience than having a good onboarding process. So first off, if you want people to stick around, then don't just give them something to read for their first day or two while they're working for you. Onboard them, introduce them to people, have them sit with other employees to either learn their job or to um, you know, start, you know, learning the processes, Inter you know, get them a, a task they can do on day one so that they can start adding value immediately. Meet with them on their first day and tell them what they can expect for the next 90 days. Talk to them about the onboarding process. I'm going to meet with you every day this week just to check in. It's just a quick 15 minute to 30 minute touch point. I'll either call you depending on if they're working at a different site or we'll meet face to face. I'll just stop by. It's going to be informal, but I want to know how things are going. I want to know what questions you have. I want to know what feedback you have on, on how we onboard our employees because we want to make it better because we want this to be the best experience possible. You want their feedback. Ask them for it. Tell them you're going to meet with them weekly until day 30. And then after that, you're going to meet with them monthly, but you're still going to have weekly check-ins. But those, you know, the 30, the 60 and the 90 day check-ins are really to talk about the onboarding process and making sure that they have everything they need to be successful in your company. You want an onboarding process that is repeatable, that everybody in your company understands. When somebody new is starting, you send an email to everybody who is going to interact with them to let them know, hey, we've got so-and-so, Johnny's starting on Monday. His role is X and he's going to be interacting with Y. His buddy for the first week is going to be Danny. Danny, I want you to do these things. Like, just have it set up. Don't make, don't ever let anyone feel like them showing up for work on a Monday for their first day is unexpected, right? There's nothing worse as an employee than feeling like nobody was ready for you and that nobody really cares that you're there, 
make sure that your employees know that they're wanted, that you're glad they're there and that you are ready for them and that you have a plan for them, right? Demonstrate a plan because that plan then translates into, hey, these guys really have their shit together. And this is someplace I could be for a long time because this is how they treat employees and it's great. And they're gonna tell other people. So you're gonna get referrals. Um, gain enrollment from new and existing employees through the onboarding process. So what I mean by that is, when you put somebody through this onboarding process, it really gives people the desire to want to be there, to want to work for you, to want to work with you, to want to be a part of this team. And they're going to want to tell other people, right? So you're going to get the referrals and you're going to just build a stronger team and building a stronger team is the foundation for building a high performing team, which is the desire of everybody. Everybody wants a high performing team. So just think about that when you're building out your onboarding process and you're getting people to help and you're letting people know we value you. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Employees who are, who are onboarded well become highly engaged employees and they're far more likely to stay with you and to offer value again and again and again to your company. They're going to become the leaders that you are trying to develop and they're going to become high performing employees. That's how much a solid onboarding process does for you. Okay. That is the end of video one. Video two, team building. So glad you tuned in for week 42 on human resources and can't wait for you to watch the next two videos.